How do we know God's will for our life? Should I marry her? Should I take that job? Should I buy that car? How do we know God's will for our life if you have all the decisions we have to make? Well, stick around and let's take a look. I'm John Whitaker, and this is the 5-Minute Bible Study, where we believe Bible teaching ought to be blue jeans theology, and so we offer Bible teaching for everyday life, and if that sounds like something that would be helpful for you, go ahead and click the subscribe button right now, maybe even click the bell icon so that you get notifications every time I upload a new video. And if you find this particular video helpful to you, I would love to know, so like it, comment, let me know how it was helpful to you, maybe even more specifically, let me know how you're wrestling with God's will for your life. All right, let's jump right into this topic. I was in college and I received a letter. Yeah, this was back in the day when we still uh, used snail mail. And I got a letter in the mail from a high school buddy who'd been dating a girl for a long time. And he really wanted to marry her, but he said in this letter, John, I want to marry her, but I haven't heard God tell me to marry her yet. Well, how do we make these kind of decisions? How do we know what God wants us to do in life? Do we have to wait to hear God's voice? Do we need for God to tell us everything we're supposed to do? Is there some sort of hidden blueprint for our life that we have to try to discover and figure out so we can be in the center of God's will? I don't think so. I think there's a simpler way, and I want to look at a passage out of Romans chapter 12 that might help us understand how to figure out God's will more for our life. Romans 12, 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you can prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Notice what the Apostle Paul says. The Apostle Paul says, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? by the renewing of your mind. And the word mind in Greek is nous, and it refers to your intellect, to your thinking skills, your reasoning skills. And what the Apostle Paul is saying is you need to have that transformed. You need to have that renewed. You need to have it filled with God's wisdom. How do you do that? Well, the primary way you do that is by the Bible. You take in the Bible. You saturate your mind with the Bible. You read it. You study it. You think about it. You memorize it. You understand it. And when you do that, Paul says here in Romans 12, Paul says, then you'll be able to prove what the will of God is. What does he mean by prove what the will of God is? Well, that word translated prove means to test and approve. And that's why you'll see such variation in the translations. It's hard to capture in English. Uh, some translations say discern, some say test, some say prove, some say test and discern. Um, what, what is he getting at? He's getting at the idea of testing and approving. Let's imagine, say, you're on a hike and you come to a river and there's a tree across the river and you want to cross this river. Well, before you totally walk on that tree, you're going to kind of step on it lightly, right? You're going to test it out. Is it solid? Is it not going to rock? Is it maybe you know big enough that it's going to hold your weight? You're going to test it and you're going to approve that it's safe for you to walk on that tree. Or maybe another example, you're going to buy a used car. You're not just going to buy it sight unseen. You're going to take it for a test drive. Maybe you'll even take it to your mechanic and have it inspected. You're testing and approving it. Well, what Paul is saying is that as your mind is renewed and you learn God's wisdom, then you're in a position where out of all the options in life, you can examine them and approve what's the good, perfect, acceptable will of God. You can sort it all out. In fact, the more you're filled with God's Word and the more you're living in sync with God's Word, the more you're kind of inside the bounds of of, of God's will, right? Like God's word tells us some specific things that are his will. Think of like a sporting event where maybe it's a basketball game or an American football game, or if you're listening overseas and football for you is what we call soccer, it's the soccer pitch and you have the, the field lined out with lines or the court lined out with lines. And as long as you're inside those boundaries, that's where the game is played. Well, scripture sets the boundaries. And as long as you're inside of that, you're not going to be outside of God's will. You may be choosing between good, better, and best. You may be choosing between something that's more wise than something else. But you're not choosing between being in God's will and outside of God's will. You have freedom to choose between a variety of options. And so how do you know God's will? It's not some sort of mysterious blueprint. It's not something you have to sort out. And if you just get it wrong, you might be you know, outside of God's will. It's living the way of wisdom. God wants to grow you as his son or grow you as his daughter to maturity so that you can make wise choices. And those wise choices will be godly good choices. 
that will bring honor to God. So as you saturate your mind with God's wisdom, you'll be able to discern God's will. If you found this video helpful, why don't you click subscribe right now so you never miss a video. And if you want more teaching from me like this, uh, you can find me on my podcast. It's called Bible and Life. I'll put a link to it down in the notes below. You can also look at my website. I've got some courses on my website that will actually help you learn the Bible, learn how to study the Bible, and learn God's wisdom a little bit more. I'll put a link to that in the notes as well. All right, thanks for tuning in to the 5-Minute Bible Study. We will see you next week.